Okay, we're on Matthew 5, verse 6. Our next beatitude. <clears throat> and remember, like we talked, there is a, kind of a, a progression. The first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, reminds us that we have to empty our lives uh, of our own desires and our own ideas and so forth and turn it over to God. And then we need to fill our lives with those things that follow. So the Christian needs to incorporate all of these beatitudes uh, into their lives. <clears throat> and so the one in verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, or for they shall be satisfied. We're going to see as we, as we read all of these that the problem with this world isn't sickness, it's sin. It's sin. And uh, I want to tell you... Okay, you can do a Denise and I in Victoria uh, were required to go to a training session yesterday, and it was the most graphic training session I've, I've ever attended in all of my years. It was called Why Teens Kill. Uh, and the person that put it on, that's, that's what he has done for decades now, is, and he presents seminars to you know, school teachers and that type of group. There were, there were officers there, detectives there, and of course school administrators there. Uh, and he's interviewed lots of serial killers, lo interviewed lots of the school shooters, those type of people. Uh, and he showed us lots of actual crime scene photos. It was extremely extremely graphic. Uh, I've never seen graphic to that extent before. And, and when I read this first line, that's what I thought of. The problem with the world isn't sickness, it's sin. And boy, did we see sin yesterday. Um, we, we watched some music videos uh, that... I mean, I remember when MTV came out back in 1983... Uh, <clears throat> very mild, extremely mild. And it was considered. Oh yeah, and it was extreme. Awful. <laughs> That's right. Awful. And we watched a, a video yesterday, two videos. One of Rihanna, which is a very popular uh, singer, and it uh, there was there was murdering in it. There, there, it, it just would blow your mind. And this was just a music video. It was beyond description. And it wasn't the worst one we saw. There was this rapper, what was his name? Oh, he looked horrible, just his picture. But he was a, was a very, very popular rapper right now and like I said I I don't know his name but they showed his video which is an extremely popular one right now showed him cutting a girl's head off showed him killing several different people several different ways and this was a music video that you can watch on TV I had no idea that music videos had got to that point. I thought they were still pretty much at the maybe some bad language or some innuendos. Oh my. I think there are some rappers out there that are still, I mean, they, they try to put out a positive message. Oh, yeah, there are. Oh, absolutely. Not all rappers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's some, there's some yeah. of the ones that are, are positive. Mm hmm. They're trying to stay clean, mm -hmm. but then you have the ones that... Yeah. Right. Well, and these are the ones the ones he talked about. Those two that were so graphic are extremely popular. Mm 
Right. That's the bad thing. It's not like there's just this little subculture, you know, that's why. These are mainstream people. And it was beyond belief. And then we went to video games. Uh, and, of course, he showed the progression, you know, from when they first came out, Pong, you know, uh, to the the most popular video game right now, sales-wise, is Grand Theft Auto V. Well, when Grand Theft Auto came, the first one came out, it wasn't too big a deal. I mean, you you stole some cars and you wrecked them, and that was about it. Oh, Grand Theft Auto V. Now, to show you how popular it was, the first day it came out, and you can buy it at Walmart, the first day it came out, it sold $800 million worth. My goodness. The first day. That's how many people own this throughout the world, especially the United States. But he showed us part of it. And in this video, in this game, you get to pick your automatic weapon and you get to uh, blow away as many cops as you want. Every time you see a cop, you get to blow them away. Shoot them in the head, shoot them in the heart, and you get to see the blood splatter. But it's not the violence in Grand Theft Auto V that's so bad. It's the sex and pornography. He showed all of it on the video. You would not believe what these kids that are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old that are playing this game. You get to choose which prostitute you go see. You get to see, you get to choose what you want the prostitute to do. And you do it in this game. And I, most of us there were floored. Especially as older people. We were really floored. I just... Well, there's really supposed to be an age limit on that one, but... Oh, yeah. there's That's like all these other things he was talking about. Yeah. They put restrictions on this, but it doesn't stop anybody. They're completely useless. All of those restrictions are just useless. Well, I have, speaking from a mm -hmm. right. perspective, I would have people make remarks. I can't believe that my third grade granddaughter or something is saying, and I said, I wouldn't have believed it either 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But we had to, you wouldn't believe what we had to curtail in mm -hmm. the third grade. Mm hmm yeah. Um, and we've had to, I've had we had to curtail like boyfriend girlfriend stuff. Mm -hmm. No, doesn't happen at school. Can't have a boyfriend or girlfriend in third grade. Forget it. Mm -hmm. You know. But it got even worse after mm -hmm. the last year. I was, mm -hmm. a couple years yeah. I was up here. Yeah. And and they said, well, can't I said I can because they're they're getting and even if even if they don't watch it themselves, they have older brothers and right. sisters who right. have phones that have it on it. Yeah. Or watch it, mm -hmm. and have it on it, or talk around right. them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That when I, you know, when you know, yeah, it it, ago, it would just blow you away. They just wouldn't have talked around yeah. little kids like that, and yeah. they talk around them. And he he talked about triggers that cause teenagers to kill. Uh, he talked about. You know, things to watch for, which of course was why teachers were there. These are things to look for. And he showed examples of 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 these teen shooters and many of them, the ones that didn't kill themselves, he's interviewed almost all of them face to face. And he even showed some of the interviews. And some of these teens that he's he's interviewed it was so obvious that they were going to kill somebody someday. It was obvious. And nobody stopped them. Parents and, and the parents, they would interview the parents. Yeah, we knew that he was doing this, 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 and this. Well, didn't it dawn on you that something was wrong? The, the kid that killed those 17 people just mm -hmm. too long ago. Yeah. He was on the news today. I forget what pro, well, that was. What show it was on? I saw it this afternoon, and uh, 
he was by himself in this isolated room before the uh, guy that was going to interview him walked in and he was talking to himself and oh, just all kinds of stuff he was going through. Mm -hmm. But when the interviewer came in and he started talking to him and the kid himself admitted that he had had vision or the devil in his right. head mm -hmm. and all this stuff and, and uh, the interviewer said, what did uh, the devil tell you to do? To kill, burn, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, surely, if he was that messed up now, somebody mm -hmm. had to have seen that yeah. Yeah. prior to all this happening. Yeah. It was it's just it was real interesting the statistics he gave us for you know the things to to look for and and how prominent uh like one of the the main things is if he uh and about eighty or ninety percent of them are male, but the female shooters numbers are increasing there's getting to be more females than there ever have been but yeah, that little one in Kansas City that just, just their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that the, they are getting more females, but still, by far, most of them are males. And but the males are, um, at, what did you say? And white. No, they're not. That was interesting. Really? Most of them are not. Well, there's only 30% of them that are white. Oh, yeah. that, that surprises me. Yeah, 70% are non-white. But you never see those on TV. No, uh -uh. they only cover the white ones. And he mentioned that yesterday. You you never see, or it's rare. But yeah, only thirty percent of them are are white males. Oh, yeah, well, that blew us away too. <laughs> but if you ever see a young person showing cruelty to animals. Mm -hmm. He says it's one of the best signs that they'll end up killing people because that's what they do is they practice on animals before they kill people. And he gave us and he showed the pictures on the screen of, of these different serial killers, school shooters, and they, he described the, what they did to the animals and then that's what they did to the people. It was just one right after another. It was it was three hours, three solid hours of that we went through, and it, you know, it just made me think of this. It made me think of this beatitude, because that that the the world only has one problem, and that's sin. That's the only problem the world has. Everything else is kind of a a subcategory of that. It all revolves around. Uh, Sin, and, and that's the kind of society we live in. It's a sinful society. Which it is. Mm -hmm. I've been kind of gotten hooked on old gun smoke, black and Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know why. <laughs> but it was amazing to me. I was watching them <clears throat> one day, and it was like, of course, everybody carried a gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Wild West, yeah. And it was like this one guy said something to the guy. Well, you know, was in it about and bang. I <laughs> shot him right there so on the I'm, spot. I was thinking it when I saw it. <coughs> I mean, that's all it is. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, you say something across the street to somebody, mm -hmm. and they just put off their gun and shoot you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, it's almost coming full circle back mm -hmm. to that. Mm hmm. Everybody can carry a gun now. Yeah. Of course, right. the way they died back then, it was there was no. Gun. Oh yeah, right. You know? There was no blood either. Yeah, they just well, I mean, blood. Just, blood. just fell over, and that was well, it. I what I was getting yeah. at, it just seemed like yeah. that was the attitude. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a gun. If you cross me, I'm going to shoot you. And you knew that if you crossed somebody, there was a chance you mm -hmm. were going to get shot. Yeah. And it just seems like it's kind of getting full circle. Mm -hmm. Now Randolph Scott, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to Randolph? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it just, yeah. that just made me think about that because yeah. it just seems like that yeah. we're, yeah. we're getting back. Where okay, if you say something bad to me, you're going to get it. Yeah, yeah. one way or another. And yeah, when he was in the ocean, yeah, reminds me of Proverbs fourteen thirty four: Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. To any people. And so, 
He says in our psalm, in our beatitude, we have to hunger and thirst for it. So it's not just wanting righteousness, it's hungering and thirsting for it. And of course, if you, know, if you lived in, the, uh, in, in that part of the world, you know, especially in the first century, there was a lot of hungering and thirsting. You know, water wasn't near as available. Uh, food wasn't as available. Uh, you know, it's, it's real easy for us. I mean, it, it, there's, there, there's stuff to drink, there's stuff to eat. Don't even have to think about it. You know, you can just go to the corner, or convenience store, or wherever. So there's not a lot of hungering and thirsting for us. But for the people in the first century, the ones that Jesus is talking to, there's a lot of hungering and thirsting. They, they were very aware of being hungry, being thirsty. You know, they didn't have refrigeration. They didn't have any of that type of thing. So this is a... When you hunger and thirst for something, you desire it a lot. I mean, you really, really want it and you want it badly. This is a strong desire. So Jesus is saying, blessed are those who strongly desire righteousness. That's how much we want it. We 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 just have to have righteousness. And of course, just like hungering and thirsting, you know, we we drink every day, we we eat every day, we're to desire righteousness every day. So we need to have an appetite for righteousness. Have an appetite for it, a thirst for it. And that's you know, we need those daily supplies, I guess, my, what might call it. We need those daily supplies, not just weekly or monthly, but we've, we've got to have it every day. And we need to take pains to get that supply. It, it should be something that we desire it that strongly. We long for it that strongly. And I think there's some, uh, you know, the Bible says that the road to heaven is a, it's a, it's a narrow, restricted way. And Jesus said, only those people who go through it, uh, who's willing to go through that narrow, restricted way, will reach that eternal home. So, you know, there, there is and there must be that strong desire, that longing uh, to, uh, to reach it. Um, oh, the Declaration of Independence. I forgot about this. It uh, guarantees us the right to pursue happiness. It doesn't guarantee happiness. It just guarantees us the right to pursue it. Well, with... Righteousness, the Bible doesn't declare that. It declares we, we have to hunger and thirst for it. We've got to long for it. We've got to have a strong desire for righteousness. Righteousness. What is it? Well, the people in the first century, you know, the Pharisees thought that righteousness was just the external things. And, and there's external things with righteousness, but they thought that's all there was. You know, they, uh, they were careful about tithing even down to the smallest herb, but a lot of other things that, were in, that people couldn't see, they didn't care about. But that, that's not hungering and thirsting for righteousness, not even close to it. We have to really, really, really desire it. Um, here's what uh, one Greek-English dictionary defines for the word righteousness. Uh, what is right? Justice. The act of doing what is in agreement with God's standards. I like that one. The state of being in proper relationship with God. Now, this is, this is something very positive. It's, it's doing what's right. It's being what's right. When it's in agreement with God. But it has to be in agreement with God's standards. 
That's righteousness. When we do things that are in accordance with, in agreement with, God's standards. And that's how God can look down upon us. Remember, we talked about this in the book of Romans over and over again. That's how He can look down upon us and declare us righteous or justified. Justified. Uh, Let's go to Romans chapter 1 for a moment. We'll just look at one place here. And if someone would read the first chapter, verses, let's see, 16 and 17. Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right, notice how he links the gospel, verse 16, with the righteousness of God. He says, for in the gospel is revealed the righteousness of God. So in the gospel, we're told what righteousness is, what living right is, what what it means to live according to God's standards. That's where we find the answer. He says it's within the gospel. Staying in Romans, Romans chapter 10. And let's see. Yeah. Would someone read verse 3? Romans 10 verse 3. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Okay. They sought to establish their own righteousness. Now notice he's not talking about God's character here. He's talking about what is right. What is right. And so... What is right according to God? Well, the Jews says they sought to establish their own. They decided to set up their own standards of what was right and wrong. Not living according to God's standards, but they decided to set up their own. And as a result, when somebody sets up their own standards, then they don't submit to God's. And that's what he says the Jews were doing. They had set up their own system. Set up their own system. And so they said, if we do this, this, and this, God will pronounce us justified. The problem with that is it wasn't wasn't God's standards they were living by. All right, so he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, or they shall be satisfied. Well, what will they be satisfied with? Well, if you look at the, they're hungering and thirsting for righteousness. So what are they going to be filled with? Well, righteousness, because that's what they're pursuing. That's what they're seeking. That's what they're wanting. That's what they're desiring. That's what they have a hunger and thirst for is righteousness. Therefore, they'll be filled with righteousness. And again, this is a a strong term in the Greek language. And this idea of being filled was a word that would often apply to uh, filling feeding animals to where they were filled, like, you know, in the stables. How you would fatten up an animal. They were being fattened up. Well, that's what this word it is here. So they'll be, uh, they hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be fattened up with righteousness. 
That's what they'll be filled with. They'll be filled with righteousness. Complete satisfaction. So in other words, if, if you're going to... If, you, if you're fattening up an animal, then you're completely filling it. And I'd say to the max. Well, that's what he's saying here. But you have to have that hunger and thirst for what's right, for what's just, for God's Word and His standards. Then you'll be completely satisfied. Um, you know, a good, a good appetite is typically a mark of good health. And, and a, a, a bad appetite or a little appetite is, is typical of not so good health. My goodness, I must be very healthy. You must be very healthy, and so is my grandson. <laughs> That's for sure. But when you look in our, our society, there's not a lot of people who are very, you know, very much hungering and thirsting for what's right. They're not pursuing that at all. Now, they're pursuing lots of things. They have a hunger and thirst for all kinds of things, but they're really not hungering and thirsting for what's right. They're not hungering and thirsting for God, for His Word, for His standards. They're, uh, they're looking for something definitely a far cry from uh, uh, God. Um, you won't need to... If somebody is really hungering and thirsting for righteousness you're not going to have to remind him or her or or admonish him or her or push him or her to to study to pray to teach to assemble i mean that's that's going to be who they are it's going to be who they are if they have that kind of attitude so there's a real difference between kind of just casually seeking heaven and really having a desire for it. Really having a desire for it. God does not, and I know you've heard me say this many times, God does not try and, and coerce people to do what's right. He tries to persuade people to do what's right. He wants people to hunger and thirst for righteousness. He didn't expect us to go out there and pound people over the head with our Bible yeah. and say, you got to come in here. That's right. That won't work. I mean, you might drag some bodies in here, but they're not going to come in for, uh, you know, to worship, to participate. That's, they won't be here for that. So there's a huge difference between persuading people to seek righteousness and trying to coerce them into doing it. God doesn't coerce people at all. And so we, we need to encourage this strong desire for what's right. This, you know, kind of have a, 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 a real hunger for doing the right thing. And let's end up by reading Psalms 42 because our time's about up. This goes to one of the songs that we sing. Psalms 42. Psalms 42. I believe it's the first couple of verses. Let's see. Yeah, would someone read that? Psalms 42, the first two verses, and that'll end our hungering and thirsting. Anybody have Psalms 42, 1 and 2? As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? That's right. Pants. As a deer pants for the water. As a deer pants for it. He says, my soul pants my soul for you. There's that thirsting 
for God, thirsting for what's right, thirsting for righteousness, for God's word. And that's, that's what we need. Well, Lord willing, we'll look at uh, Blessed Are the Merciful next Wednesday night.